Okay, so this will be a feedback slash critique for Umbrellos. Uh, kind of late to this because just didn't have time to record anything. So apologies in advance, I guess, or apologies for being late, whatever. Um, I guess I haven't done a feedback for you yet. Uh, the quick tale, uh, quick introductions aside, I'm you'll know me as Shazam on the Discord. Uh, for the server, and I'm just a nerd who likes Tekken, and I like Fakum Rum, because Fakum Rum's OP. Don't care what anybody says, the dude's still busted, right? Maybe not undisputed best, but people are like, oh, well, you know, uh, even though my mix-ups hit from range 4, uh, people can duck them, and people are silly. Like, this character's still really strong, you just have to play slightly smarter than you did before. Heaven forbid, right? Anyway. I watched a bit of the gameplay and it just feels like you're really at a loss as to how like what to do and how to proceed. Uh, well, let's let's do like the good news and bad news. The bad news is it doesn't really feel like you have a strong idea of what you're doing and you just get overwhelmed really easily. Uh, the good news is is from like the five minutes that I watched, it doesn't seem like you have any crazy bad habits per se, right? And the other good news is. That's just kind of par for the course, right? Like when you're just starting out, there's a shitload of stuff that you can get overwhelmed with, right? So I'm going to break down this sort of feedback and I'll most likely just cover one match in terms of, hey, here are direct examples of what to do and what not to do. But I'm going to go over a multifaceted approach. The first part is going to be, here is what you can do at your current level, right? Like in the early ranks, so the early Dan ranks where... <coughs> It's not, uh, people play in a specific pattern where if you just take advantage of the weaknesses of that pattern, you will see a lot of easy success, right? Um, that being that early ranks and even just online in general, even when you're at high ranks, people are just stupid aggressive. They don't really have a game plan besides I'm going to throw everything at my opponent until they're dead. And as you progress, some people just get better at hiding it with like movement, with fancy movement or punishment. But... The end result is the same, is a lot of people are just stupidly aggressive online, right? And it can be kind of overwhelming as Falcon Rum at times, because you don't have like some, you know, very evasive backswing blow or stupid fast and easy move that's like, all right, get me out of pressure. But the benefit of that is that you have a pretty, still pretty strong punishment suite. You know, RIP 1-4 pre-nerf, but it, it could never last as it was. Right, uh, I could still use some frame advantage, but whatever. I'm not Bamco. They don't know what they're doing with their character, or they don't know what they want to do with it. I'm simply going to tell you: here is what you can do as Falcon Rum, and here's what you can do about Tekken in general. Right? I'm by no means a professional at this game. I'm simply someone who really enjoys the game, and has enough experience playing Falcon Rum, watching Falcon Rum gameplay and fighting Fakum Ram, then I'm just kind of like, hey look, here's what you could be doing to make your life a bit easier. <laughs> so, a lot of it is that you're you're doing the backdashing thing, I don't know if you're still working on it, but that's good, that's a good habit, right? Uh, movement is, it's, it's not, you know, it's not as important as it used to be, because all these moves track, all the backdashes suck, and all this other, you can, you don't, some people overhype it, like, you need it, you will, you will die without it. I don't know, man, fucking Justice is a Paul player, and he just fucking stair steps all day. You can, you can overcome it. I'm, I'm going on a little rant, but just, you're working on the movement, that's good. Now, here's what you need to look, slightly work on, right? Is this, why are you pressing 3 plus 4, right? Why? Because here, here, so you can, I think you're in your mindset, you're kind of like, oh, well, you know, I think they're going to rush in, which is understandable. But I still think here, the problem with that line of thinking is that it's way too early to call that, right? She's advancing on you at the start, and if you at any point press 3 plus 4 at that, at this range, you might have hit something. But now you're super far away, right? She, you just, she just sees you backdashing, so she, eh. so she starts backdashing, and then now... It's like any button you press isn't very likely to hit, right? So try to plan those opportunities a bit more. Confirm that your opponent is actually approaching you and trying to attack you before committing to the attack. 
and at these ranges where the opponent starts backing away, then you can consider, all right, well, let me start advancing. Why do you want to do that? To put them more in some unfavorable ranges where your moves will actually reach. All right. Here's the thing to consider, is that, yeah, Julia has party crasher, which is forward forward one, the little elbow that she's doing. But Fock, again, reaches, f has far longer reach than she does, right? T so the point being is that in, in you'll be in your ideal range earlier than Julia will be. So you advance a little bit forward, and then once you start to feel comfortable in your ideal range, then you start pressing the buttons, right? Try to avoid mindlessly whiffing, because that is always going to be a pronounced weakness of Fock, is that his whiff, his moves whiffing is usually death, right? Sharper opponents will just eat you alive. And even if you're not getting punished at these early stages, right? Even if you're not getting punished, you're building up bad habits that are going to hurt you in the future. Does this mean you should, like, delete the game every time you whiff a button? No. I'm simply saying... Watch out for these bad habits. Try to minimize them as much as you can. Is it going to happen? Yes. But the I, the goal is to like minimize those occurrences as much as you can. So <clears throat> so right here, that's uh, and this is another thing. This is going to be an important facet. Doesn't matter what level of play you're playing. Know your punishes as much as you can. Know all of your punishes. And so then, when you actually do get more familiar, like in that situation, Julia is minus 12. So you have a 12 frame punish. You know, you immediately do 4 2 1 in the future because 4 2 1 leads to a knockdown, which either pushes them super far away, letting you reset to neutral and kind of readjust your positioning so you can focus more on space control, or they stay on the ground and you get a free hit with forward, forward, 2 1, right? Or forward, forward, 1 plus 2, whatever you want. So. It's another thing to consider. It's that I'm not going to harp too much on matchup knowledge too, too, like too often because I'm assuming you're very new, right? I'm saying is focus on making sure you know your punishes first. Know what is your 10 frame. Know what is your 12 frame. Your 13 frame, which you don't really need for Fock because it's just down forward one two. Know what your 14 frame is, right? Because it can come up. Uh, and stuff like that just be very familiar with with your frames at critical situations typically like 12 frame standing is very important to have a good punisher for uh 13 frame crouching is a very good punisher is a very good frame to have a punisher for etc etc right commit that to muscle memory so that when you're faced with an actual situation of okay i don't know what my opponent did but you have all the tools you need to just do trial and error, right? If the opponent does something and you think it's punishable, press a button, right? Okay, I press forward two. Sweet, it worked. That means that move is minus 12, or possibly, right? Or it doesn't work and you're like, well, fuck, okay, that move is not minus 12, or I was too slow. And you just kind of rinse and repeat until you formulate like a basic idea, right? So, ba so every time... So the first time Julia does this move, the little double kicks, right? You, you, you don't get the punish. That's fine. Every time in the future, you just experiment, right? Okay, what, what can I get away with and what does it seem like that she's not blocking? And you just do this in the heat of the match and you rinse and repeat and that's how you build up that knowledge, right? You already know what your tools do. So then with a little bit of trial and error, you figure out what your opponent can and can't do. And then if you're not in a round, you just look it up so you reduce the amount of work you have to do, right? So all these tools are available to you, and it's just about applying them in a methodical manner and just kind of building up that knowledge over time. So, and, and everybody, everybody's super aggressive, very easy to just kind of whiff punish and then start applying your offense. And it's just stuff to keep in mind. A little bit of patience and just punishment knowledge goes a really long way in terms of ranking up in terms of dealing with these very aggressive opponents so right here you're there's a lot of oh is she just gonna put you in the window all right so right here you're doing a lot of like strings and you're just not sure what to do right if if both you and your opponent are just standing there she's kind of back dashing and now she's dashing up at you right but if you if you ever face a situation where the opponent's, the opponent's not sure. What the fuck are you doing? So you do one four, right? You do immediately do your your thing. Don't punish her there. Try to go for one or four, one, four three four, and all this other stuff, right? Basically, 
both you and your opponent are standing both you're kind of like throwing mids at each other and some highs but no one's really doing anything in these situations you want to backdash wait for a whiff opportunity or wait for some hesitation on the opponent and then just hit them with any of your lows right nobody it, it, people people are like oh you can react it down back far eh. Eh, it's like at that borderline of reactable it, it, we'll, we'll talk about the reactability of down back four in the future the point being is if your opponent's trying to dance around and just afraid of all your mids and highs and they're just blocking they're not blocking low so if your opponent is just standing there hit them with a low and get in some chip damage and Fakumram hits like a truck on every single poke so chip damage is very easy to get with him right so in this awkward range, right, where you you try to do the four, you try to do the four three four here. Instead of doing that, right, you 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 instead use that hesitation and frame advantage you have on your opponent and just do down back four. You get a huge chunk of damage, and the opponent is now you're now plus five, and the opponent is forced crouch. Which brings me to my next point, right? If your opponent's just standing there blocking use your plus frame moves like forward forward three or instant while running three if you can do it right uh you don't want to do it too often or overcommit because again these moves are very linear and you'll die even even at lower ranks people just have a lucky sidestep and but if you notice that okay my opponent's not sidestepping a bunch they're not really ducking that much they're very they're 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 not sure about how to proceed then take advantage of their hesitation and just slam them under some plus frames this is very important because at early ranks nobody knows what the fuck to do when, when they're in their when they're in a when their opponent has a lot of frame advantage, right? Everybody's always mashing or they just think, oh, if I press a button, it'll get me out of this situation because it's worked for them in the past. And you take advantage of that, right? If you put the Julia in four scratch with down by four, it's it's kind of risky because Julia is a full crush mix up. But the principle of the matter is if you put your opponent in a in a heavily disadvantageous situation, especially at these early ranks, it's very likely they're not sure what they're going to do. So you can just keep applying mix-ups and keep putting them under that plus frame situation. And they're just going to keep mashing buttons because they don't quite know of just, you know, just blocking or they don't want to deal with the mix-up. Right. So TLDR of that whole spiel. If your opponent is just standing there, start using your lows. Get in your chip damage and make them want to duck. Because then, I mean, your highs are going to be awkward, but then your strong-ass mids will be there, right? Or if you don't want to use a low, just do back forward four, right? Force them, give them reasons to duck. Force them into these awkward situations. Uh, and then once you start getting that frame advantage, keep in mind that your opponent is very likely unsure of what to do. So you can start pressing buttons, right? Like you do down back four on hit and they're in range. Fuck it, do down forward two one or down forward two three, right? They're very likely to be pressing buttons and they're very likely to be very aggressive. Again, this is more so for these early ranks and for these early ranks, right? People are going to be very aggressive. Defense is not a word that they familiarize themselves with. Uh, Smurfs aside, you'll get a lot of mileage just by I put you in a plus frame situation. You don't know how to handle it. You're just going to mash buttons and I'm just going to counter hit you till you're dead, right? Uh, let's keep going. You've seen this. So there's going to be a lot of these situations too, where the opponent, Fakamrom has this too. Like, let's say you're on the ground right now, and this Julia was instead Fakamrom. The Fakamrom will just keep doing forward, forward, one plus two. And if you don't wake up properly, he's just going to keep hitting you till you're dead. And I've seen... And people, I've seen this happen to people all the time, right? They just hold back because that's what they think they're supposed to do. And then they just get head out of it by Julia forward forward three or Falcon Rom forward forward one plus two. Make sure you lab these situations. So well, let's, 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 let's talk about, let's talk about labbing characters. There's a shitload of characters in this game. Even when there's not a shitload of characters, there's a shitload of moves and stuff you got to be aware about, right? I mean, yeah, you have your eddies, your lings, your lays, blah, blah, blah. But every character is a knowledge check, right? Every character's got their gimmicks. How you want to handle that is up to you, right? Here, here's my process. I get hit by something, I get pissed off and salty, and then I look up what the counter is, and then I just practice that until I feel satisfied. Right. Will I run into that mix-up or character ever again? Maybe, maybe not, but I just want to make sure that I'm doing what I can to to make sure I don't get got like that, right? 
at the end of the day, you got to decide and make, and you got to see, okay, what matchups do I want to prioritize? Which characters do I just hate and I never want to lose to? Or which characters do my friends play? Or which characters am I running into online a lot? And it's a lot, and it's a lot of knowledge and a lot of information to process, but you just need to build up that knowledge and you got to start at some point. Oh, I really hope the baby crying doesn't show up in the video. Like right here, this could be like she she could keep going and she's going to in a later round, but these this could easily be avoided with just holding or teching. Hmm. Like that one, you if you held forward, even though she hit you the first time, you would have low parried the second hit. That one is just kind of like blocking, and then she'll be you know. Oh, here we go. Right, so, R.I.P. dude. And that's the thing, is it's just like, you might never run into this Julia again, but you will run into future Julias. And Julia is a really annoying character. So, you just kind of go, okay, I died to that. Let me check my replay. Let me see what the hell happened. Recreate the situation in training mode and figure out what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Like right there, right? Anytime Julia does that move, you need to do back one. Right? You're not gonna launch her, but you'll you'll get huge damage off of that. And Fox back one is really good at punishing a lot of Julia's stuff. Because at the er Julia, she, people are like, oh, Julia's super unsafe. She's got a bunch of minus 14 moves. And then you play against a good Julia and they never fucking do any of those things. I hate it. Um, Julia's annoying. It is what it is. At the at the at the you know the the level where you're at, a lot of these Julias are going to be doing a bunch of unsafe shit, right? Julia can be very unsafe when when people start out with her because they just do her strings and all her strings are like death. So there's a um, I'll link some videos about like hey here's what Julia has and here's all her frame data and stuff, and you just you know figure out what frame data she is after this move. I think she's like minus fourteen. Let me just check. Whilst anyway, minus 13. Oh, is it? Is that actually it? Oh, that's such bullshit. Wait, did she do whilst anyone one on one? Yeah, that's what she did. Oh, that's bullshit. Minus 13. Yeah, same difference. Do your, do, do your, you know, do your minus 13, your 12 frame punisher. Right? Just think of it like this. Anytime the opponent does an unsafe move, that is free damage. That is one less poke you have to do. That is a little bit less of a combo. It, it's like one less poke you have to do or your next combo might kill the opponent and you need to capitalize on those situations as much as possible. Hence why it's important to either A, know all your frame datas and punishes or stuff, or B, is just be familiar with your with the character you're, you're fighting and just being like, okay, I know, I know you're punishable here, so let me do something. Hmm. Um, so this is, this is, I guess this is like the old flow chart, right? Like this used to be plus 16 and you could just get a free press of down of three plus four. That's not, that's not really going to happen as often. Um, your plus three, three plus four will be 15 frames. Whew. <sighs> Consider consider stuff. Uh, consider other options as well. You know, do forward three, do back four two, do down forward one. Because plus three is not a lot. Um, it works in some instances and it doesn't in others. So all I'm saying is is add more moves to your repertoire besides just three plus four. <laughs> and definitely don't do that. Uh, yeah, you'd have to practice the punishes there. Oh, rip. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, rip. Nice. Fortunate. Nice. 
Ah, you had the right idea. You had a very good idea. Okay, so here's the thing, right? So you got your running three. Congratulations. You have won the neutral. You are now plus nine. I, there is, there is like no button on this earth that could beat whatever move you decide to throw out, right? Maybe, maybe you're facing Yoshi and you decide to do down forward two and you'll most likely die. So in these heavy situations, this is where you'd arguably go for something like three plus four, right? Where you're massively plus framed and there is nothing the opponent can do that's gonna be fast enough to beat three plus four, right? If you're plus nine and you do three plus four, your opponent literally needs a nine frame move in an ideal world. Online lag fucks everything up, but that's a whole different story. So this is where you should apply three plus four, right? If they do anything, if they press a button, if they try to move or sidestep or do something, they're gonna get hit. And if they press the button, you're gonna counter hit launch them for easy points, right? There's a stage in video talking about like how much frame advantage is too much, and it's, it's stuff to consider, right? If I'm plus three and I press a button, what does that button lose to, right? If I'm plus nine and I press a button, what does my button lose to? Uh, let me give you a hint. Very little. As long as you stick to stuff like three plus four, right? If you start doing stuff like orbital, yeah, yeah, you're, you're most likely going to get hit out of stuff. But we'll 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 talk about that later. But yeah, uh, you don't need to you don't need to do one four, right? Especially when the opponent can like crouch and punish you. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that was very good, very good. Look at this, look at this, right? Easy, easy. Fifteen points of damage, and you can just backdash to safety or just block. You're not have to, you don't have to worry about being in a mix up. You don't have to worry about down four killing your turn and making you unable to move or sidestep anything, right? And let me let me give you a hint. Uh, nobody blocks low at these early ranks, right? You'll you'll get like ten lows in a row, and then people will start freaking out and they'll start ducking, and then you start doing three plus four. Easy, easy wins, right? People just don't just don't block at these early ranks, right? See, so you did you did like one low, and then right here they they just start flash ducking because they're like oh shit he's he's doing lows i don't know what to do here and they should have died like right here you should have just done back one right eh, maybe down four two maybe three plus maybe three plus four right but just immediate death and so that's the thing to consider look all you did was a low and then all of a sudden this opponent's ducking and they're free free to any of your chunky ass mids right like i don't think three plus four damage was ever nerfed Oh, whoops. Hell yeah. God, I love this move. 3 plus 4 is still doing 20 damage. That's a shitload of damage. And if you get a counter hit launcher, that's a lot of damage, right? So, if your opponent starts flash ducking after one low, just start hitting them with 3 plus 4, and then you start putting them in the blender. Because they're not, they're gonna, they're gonna eat that chunky damage and then start freaking the fuck out, especially at these early ranks. Um, let's, let's, let's see how this round ends. Oh, uh, yeah, never use down three. <laughs> what was it? Like right here. If you're gonna do down three, just do down four, right? Same shit, same move, but way better damage. Wait, actually, I know they nerfed. <laughs> Rip. Yeah, so down 3 does 11 damage and down 4 does 15. That's 4 extra points of damage. You're still left in the same frame situation. And if and and if you got a counter hit, congratulations. You you down 4 will carry your mix up, right? So that's the thing you got to consider. It's just kind of like if I do a move, what were my other options in that situation? What are my better options I could have been doing? Don't ever use down 3. Uh, I'm assuming right way, like when you did it here, it was an input accident or some accidental input or whatever. But I'm just saying for the future, in neutral, there's just no point to using down three. There's just no point. You want to cancel into kicks, you have other strings that do the job just fine. And just leave down three, four for combos. Hmm. 
Nice. Good idea, but unfortunate spacing. Good punish. Nice. God, I love 3 plus 4. Yeah, so there's there's the risk with using while running 3. Oh, I think you can punish that. Nice. Holy shit, he reaches so far. Uh, are you dead? You are de Uh, actually maybe not. No, no, you're totally dead. Oh shit! Huh. Oh, I always thought that would have done more damage. Way to go, season 4. <laughs> nice. Hmm, unfortunate. Oh, ah, uh, nice. Don't, don't use down 3. What else could be done here? Eh. Oh, nice. Uh, punish that. Nice. I mean, I you didn't punish it, but I just like I just like back forward four. Get the key. Oh shit! I thought you actually lost. Oh, uh, what the hell did I watch? I think I watched a lot of matches. Yeah. Okay. So, oh wait, you ended with down three? Please, no. I mean, it's funny. Nice, that's, that's not good. Okay, so, uh, I'll just keep talking. So, what you can be doing now to see some early success, right? Uh, just learn your punishers, play a bit more patient, let your opponent whiff and block all their strings and then you just <laughs> and then you just punish them right in terms of what are some even easier ways to just rack up some damage at your current level against the caliber of opponents you're facing right just do 3 1 3 1 4 3 1 4 4 3 1 2 3 1 4 4 4 or whatever right that entire string series, nobody knows what the fuck to do in low ranks, right? They're they're gonna eat the low once, then they're gonna they're gonna be free to the mid, and then they'll just be constantly being put in a mix up, right? Um, and you do run the risk of you know, oh no, they might block my launch punishable low. It's like, yeah, but most people are just gonna be mashing half the time. Trust me, people just don't know how to handle that string, and it's easy easy damage. You gotta be careful though because you don't want to over rely on that string because it's a bad habit you know against stronger players you will get killed right um other things to consider is put your opponent in disadvantageous situations meaning if they're just standing around slam them with back forward four or slam them with forward forward three and just put them in a bad spot and the caliber of opponents you're facing right now will likely just freak out and try to mash buttons and then you just hit them with any of your counter hit tools, right? For some easy, easy damage. Um, now, the thing I want to stress is that while you'll see some, some, some success at your initial level by implementing like, you know, his cheesy strings and all this other stuff, these are bad habits that will be hurting you in the future because they're just really tough to break. Right, I'm not saying that they are completely unusable at a high level, but your rate of success drastically goes down as you fight stronger opponents. So if you want the if you want the easy steamrolls right now, because nobody at your level is going to be able to effectively deal with the Fock matchup, and if you run into someone who's just you know Korean backdashing all over the screen and just blocking all your down fours and whatever, you know it's a smurf. What can you do? In a in a realistic in a in an ideal scenario where you're fighting someone's actually on your level, they don't know how to handle any of Fox moves, right? The dude's just a can opener when it comes to his mix-ups. But you also want to, at the side, just do stuff that'll prepare you better for the future. What are some fundamentals you could be working on? You're working on the movement, it seems like, so that's always a good thing. Keep that up. But also, punishment is a huge core fundamental in this game, right? 
you're even even mid intermediate pro high level whatever you're going to be facing people who have a who at first seem like they have a very you know this huge flurry of offense and like fuck what am i supposed to do i just have to just keep blocking all day i don't know what to do but then once you just simply learn oh here's my punish for the situation and here's the gap where i can punish him and stuff like that and you keep building up that knowledge you open up a huge wealth of opportunities and just the ability of figuring out what your opponent is weak to or what what mistakes your opponent is making and then taking advantage of them is huge and will go a long way but it's a skill that you need to start developing as soon as possible right just taking a breather just seeing like okay based on my previous experience in this match here's what i believe my opponent is going to do next and then plan it out accordingly you have and you know it's tough at first right you're i'm, I'm describing something that seems like it'll take a long time and it kind of does but then you never have that time in the heat of a round and i'm not saying you will at the start i'm just saying start working on it now build yourself up and trust me later on down the line you will be able to start making these snap judgments in milliseconds right due to muscle memory due to the experience ingrained into your body um neutral punishment slash matchup knowledge combo slash oki and then personal opinion stuff neutral i think you have a solid start in neutral you're not throwing out too many like hey kill me please moves like you're not just spamming down forward two three you're not just spamming back one at the slightest pixel moving stuff like that but there are things that you could be improving on right just being a bit more cognizant of what your opponent is doing you can't just you can't just play rock'em sock'em robots or whatever and just all right i'm gonna throw my moves oh my turn is over time to block your moves if you notice that your opponent is not doing something and you have a move that can abuse that do it if they're just stand blocking all day do a low if they're just blocking low all day do a mid because the thing you have to consider is that each move interacts with every other move you have, right? If you start doing lows, that means your opponent will start ducking, which means your mids will start becoming more effective. If you do a lot of mids, they'll keep stand blocking, and then your lows and throws and some of your highs will start to be more effective, right? It's about that ebb and flow and figuring out what you start, what you need to be doing to condition your opponent or what you notice that your opponent is failing to adequately deal with and you just keep slamming those buttons, right? Uh, other aspects of neutral. Fock has buttons that hit from across the screen and they're, they're literally just pokes and you just poke with them, right? If you're unsure of what your opponent likes to do, just tap them with three make sure they're not sidestepping because the moves stupidly linear right but just tap them with three and see what you're do see what they do if they immediately start ducking you're like okay well now i know that i can do like maybe do three four or i can just do three into another three if they immediately start trying to backdash or mash out of the way one whiff punish them but two it's like okay well they're gonna keep mashing so maybe i can actually do something with my strings right stuff like that uh other aspects of neutral uh, there's a lot but i just kind of hit the main points punishment slash matchup knowledge i'm not going to go too into detail about punishing julia just google look up on youtube julia punish video i'm sure there's plenty of them that part you just got to decide for yourself do you want to put in the research and mit mitigate the amount of cheese and gimmicks you're going to have to deal with this matchup right there are going to be characters where you deal with all the gimmicks and strings and that's all they got and then you're just kind of laughing but then you'll deal with characters where it's like, okay, I got rid of all the gimmicks, I can deal with all the gimmicks, I can deal with all the strings, and now the real match begins, and those characters are typically top tier, right? Once you deal, once you deal with all the gimmicks, and you're like, oh shit, this character's still a pain in the ass to fight, they're probably top tier. Uh, how you want to approach that is up to you, right? There's 50 characters in this game, you just... Oh, maybe you just really hate Julia, and you just want to really learn the Julia matchup, more power to you. Maybe you really hate Gigas. You're like, I never want to lose to Gigas. And you just start practicing all your punishes and researching that matchup. Or you ran into like three laws in a row and you're like, I just never want to lose to law. So I'm just going to start learning this matchup. That's, you know, you can. It's all up to you. Do however you want to do it, right? 
Uh, combo slash Oki. I didn't really see a combo from you. Uh, it was mainly just like kind of pokes and the occasional like, oh, I got you. Maybe there's a combo here at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Uh nice. Oh, it begins. Oh, she should have committed to that stupid kick thing. Nice. God, I love that move. It's so dumb. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. Practice your BNBs. Uh anytime just making sure because Anytime you get a counter hit launch or a launch or whatever, you know, Falconrum is just basically going to go, I'm going to do 70 damage now. And it's crazy. Like, he does so much damage. And he'll carry them to the wall. And you, it doesn't matter what stage or what universe you're in, unless it's an infinite, you're going to get to the wall with Falk. And that's when you can really start honing in on the mix ups, right? Uh, just, you know, make sure you brush up on your common knowledge. If you have a moment, to be like, hey, here's where I did a combo. Do you have any feedback? Yeah, I don't know. It's all kind of there. And then I think Core Jam uploaded a, a season four video for Falcon Rum. So you just follow that. There's not really much else to, to say. Uh, personal opinion stuff. These are moves, tools, and techniques that I think are cool, but your mileage may vary, right? At the end of the day, play how you want, man. Um, if your opponent's hesitating or showing any signs of hesitation, back forward for right? Just just do jet kick, force them into an unfavorable situation, make them freak the fuck out, and just start abusing that move, because that move is insane, right? And you want to become more familiar with it, because one, it's one of your most powerful tools, and two, as you become more familiar with it, you'll become more familiar with the drawbacks, right? It's like, oh, if I go for back forward four here, I think I'll likely whiff, and you'll then you'll die, right? So you need to become more familiar with that tool because it's stupidly good, right? Super long range, launcher on natural hit, plus on block, and it tracks. That shit is homing. Nobody's going to step that, right? So leverage that tool to the best of your ability. And it's easy because you just need a simple input. You don't need a running start like with, like with um, instant wall running three and other stuff, right? Uh... Dash block. Dash blocking is your friend. The problem is that it's tech and online, so it's like non-existent, but at the end of the day, the principle remains the same. I didn't bring it up earlier because I don't, it won't like help you too much at your level. I feel like you'll get more mileage out of just punishment and other stuff, but dash blocking is a valuable skill to have, right? <clears throat> you, 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 you dash forward, so you press forward twice, and then you immediately hold back, right? And it is one of the best tools in Tekken because it is the least amount of commitment for possibly the most amount of reward. Because if people see Fakarom dashing in at them, they start freaking the fuck out. They'll start sidestepping. So then you're like, okay, well, you're going to sidestep. I'll do down four or back three. Or they start throwing out moves in, in hopes of keeping you out. And then you just, well, you held back. So we either block it and punish it, block it and just continue living life. Or it whiffs and then you go for a cool whiff punish, right? So just stuff like that that's very important. It's just kind of developing, trying to develop play patterns that create the least amount of risk for you, but can maximize rewards. And even if you don't get a fancy punish, even if you don't get a poke in, information is a reward in of itself, right? Information is power. If you dash block and your opponent doesn't do anything, then you can reasonably, you know, make a, a hypothesis of like, okay well i think they're you know they're very passive so in the future instead of just dash blocking i'll dash block and then do like four four with three and see what they react to so do you get what i'm saying right it's just about again figuring out what your opponent does and more importantly does not do and then adjusting your offense accordingly other other personal opinion stuff stuff that i think is cool uh anytime you're you're facing an opponent who doesn't, you know, block or do a bunch of stuff, just do down back four. God, that move is so much fun. All right, just do down back four. Um, like right there, you're just standing there. I mean, you did house sweep, which ends up working out fine. <laughs> oh, you're going to put her in the blender. Oh, well, there's a combo opportunity, All right? You got the wall splat. Finish the combo. Get your damage in, right? 
and don't just don't just backdash away here maintain a safe distance where you can start pressing your buttons and forcing the opponent into awkward situations just be this immovable wall the opponent is going to be having one ball one wall to their back and then you're going to be standing in front of them acting as another wall right and you want to create incite panic and force them to think about fuck how do i get out of the situation and then that's where the mistakes will pop up and that's where you punish her for free damage and hopefully a victory so yeah you you the movement stuff is fine but you're clearly just backdashing in instances where you don't need to why are you backing away press your advantage right when your opponent's back us to the wall it's fucking candy town dude you press the advantage you force them into panic you into panicking or force a mistake out of them and that's when you can really start racking up the damage um oh shit i talked for a long time yeah man i mean that's just kind of all i got for now uh tired <laughs> i need to take a nap but obviously i threw a lot at you and a lot of nothing if anything didn't make sense feel free to ask questions that's what we're here for just you know let us know hey here's what i'm struggling with and if you have like if you wanted more specific advice here's what you can do all right uh, i guess in just in summary is i would i would focus on you know getting used to your punishes because you're punishing stuff with like one four which is pathetic these days when you could be punishing with four two one right a lot more damage and knockdown it's super valuable and think about it for every 1-4 you are doing, right? How much is 1-4 now? For every 1-4, you're getting like maybe 25 points of damage. 24? I, I can't remember. Right? You're getting like, eh, like 20, 20 damage. Let's say that. But if you did something like 4-2-1, when you, when you had the opportunity to do so, you're getting at least like 30 damage, right? Your damage shoots up by like 7 points. And that adds up, right? If you do 3 if you do four one fours throughout the match, but two or three of them could have been, you know, four or two one instead, you just gain, you just netted like an easy twenty points of damage, right? And that stuff adds up. So maximizing your punishes will go a long way. And start once you start learning what the hell is punishable, you start figuring out like, oh, they're just doing all this easy punishable shit, and then you'll just rack up the free damage. And once they realize that their gimmicks don't work, right? You're you're faced with a situation of okay, a they're gonna monkey it up because they don't know what to do besides their gimmicks and you just keep punishing them till they're dead or b they freak the fuck out they don't know what to do so then they just start slowing down and trying to figure out what else they can do and once they start to slow down that's when you can start applying your offensive tools really easily right um so yeah focusing on punishment will be a really good way for you to improve in the long term in terms of short-term gains just start doing streams <laughs> That's all I can say, right? Like you saw how easy it was to just kind of dash in and do hell sweep, right? From the forward, forward, forward cancel. If you do down forward one to hell, hell sweep, right? Easy, easy damage, right? Or if you do something like three one four or three one four four or three one down four or three one four, right? Easy string or doing three four four, right? Where Fock does his like homing plus on plus on block high. It's it's opponents just easily start to crumble against his offense because they're just not familiar with the matchup to to the degree that they need to be so take advantage of that uh just people people on defense when they're defending and they're put in like a plus frame situation they just don't know what to do yeah anyway food for thought for the future if you have any questions let me know uh yeah that's all i got <laughs>